Thank you, Dr. Sakaris. Uh, and thank you for asking me to uh, present our findings at this press briefing. Um, so I'm presenting on behalf of Amy Kirkwood, who's in the audience, and she'll be presenting the oral presentation this afternoon. So just to set the scene, acute lymphoblastic leukemia um, is the most common cancer of childhood, the most common leukemia of childhood. It has an excellent cure rate with modern risk stratified treatment, but has considerable toxicity, which results in between 5 and 10 percent of children dying off their treatment, and a significant minority also having uh, both acute and late side effects, which result in a poor quality of life and high burden of care on the families. And the other issue we're still dealing with is that when they do relapse, about a half of the relapses involve the central nervous system compartment. So uh, the trial in question was uh, trying to address these two issues of toxicity and relapse within the central nervous system. And I had a complex stratification as to all trials of acute lymphoblastic leukemia in children, which resulted in three risk groups, uh, a low risk group, an intermediate risk group and a high risk group, and the stratification was based on a combination of age, white cell count, and the genetics of the leukemia. Um, and, oops. Would you like to turn on the timer? First question was if we were to give a shorter but higher dose course of the uh, most optimum steroid, dexamethasone, during the first month of treatment, would it cause less toxicity than our standard schedule of 28 days? And this was to detect a 5% difference in a composite toxicity endpoint, which included uh, treatment-related deaths as well as significant steroid-related side effects. The second question was in two parts, what we call R2 interim maintenance, which compared high-dose methotrexate, which uh, has uh, for a number of years, 50 years, been thought to be important to prevent relapses within the central nervous system, uh, although it hasn't been standard custom and practice within the United Kingdom protocol, so we decided to test that against our standard interim maintenance. And here we were trying to reduce the rate of relapse involving the nervous system from 4 to 1.5%. And the third was also a toxicity question. Uh, the standard uh, treatment of acute lymphoblastic leukemia involves a prolonged two to three year phase of primarily oral chemotherapy to which uh, on the UK and American side, we've uh, added in pulses of vincristine and five days of dexamethasone, whereas our European continental partners have not. So we tested whether the UK backbone could result in the same outcome without the pulses, uh, and thereby reduce the toxicity that's associated with them. And this was what's called a non-inferiority study, where we were trying to reduce toxicity without affecting the relapse rate. So we recruited a total of 2,750 patients. Uh, we have a median follow-up of 76 months. Uh, for a variety of reasons, some patients we excluded from the randomizations, and we ended up with uh, 1,900 patients randomized to the steroid question and 1,570 patients that were randomized to the two, uh, uh, R2 questions, the interim maintenance and pulses questions. Uh, the uh, steroid randomization was closed early, and uh, so after that, all patients received the standard 28-day schedule, but were still randomized to the R2 question. So in brief, uh, we did not 
unfortunately see a lower toxicity with a shorter schedule, which interestingly is still the standard schedule in the US for children under the age of 10 years. Uh, and the results of the second randomization, the R2, were highly confounded by interaction with the first randomization, which has made analysis of the results very difficult. And Amy has to be congratulated that she's tried to uh, bring out some messages. One which is very clear is that it uh, unfortunately did not reduce the risk of CNS relapse, but may have some benefit in reducing the risk of uh, relapse within the bone marrow. Uh, for some subgroups of uh, the B type of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is the more common type in children, but is associated with toxicity, uh, with delayed clearance of the drug in 60% of patients and renal toxicity in a uh, minority of 1.7%. The omission of pulses did not uh, increase the relapse rate within the boundaries of non inferiority margins, which was 5%. So there was a difference, but it was less than 5%. Uh, the difference was in favor of pulses, but it was not significant because we were only powered to detect a 5% difference. There was a hint of benefit for the overall event free survival benefit, but that was complicated by the fact that uh, we, see, we saw a higher rate of secondary cancers in the children who received uh, who did not receive pulses, which we are struggling to explain uh, to, uh, a biological basis for. Uh, there was again an excess of toxicity, primarily uh, infections and uh, neurological toxicity associated with the pulses. And we uh, had an add-on study looking at patient-reported quality of life and burden of care outcomes, which we have yet to analyze, but I'm pretty sure it'll show that uh, the pulses in high-risk methotrexate are associated with an impact on quality of life. So uh, in conclusion, uh, the trial did not give us the answers we were looking for, but that's why we do randomized trials. Uh, and at least we have one clear answer, which is the Hydus Methrex. It does not seem to have benefit in reducing the risk of CNS relapse. And thank you. I'll stop there.